Hi, welcome to this video lecture. We are going to continue talking about the Collimator Application Programming Interface, or API, which allows us to write Python code that can push data into our Collimator model, run the model, and then pull data back out. So this is kind of mimicking uh, communication protocols that might happen in industrial control systems, where you uh, your industrial control system talks to your distributed control system, but you may have even more advanced applications happening on like a Windows server that can do things like advanced control or uh, real-time optimization. So we're going to work toward those things, but today we're just going to talk about how do we uh, get results out of our collimator simulation model, which sort of represents our chemical plant and the control system. So where we left off before, we had developed this uh, Jupyter Notebook. We imported PyCollimator, um, we gave it this information, which is like, uh, kind of like the password to, to authorize it to be able to push and pull data. So I'm going to go ahead and run these blocks again since I'm starting fresh today. Okay, uh, you can list the models that are already available in your Collimator account here. Uh, we don't need to do that again. I do need to load this model again. So I'm going to load this module 4. Just for fun, I'm going to pull these parameters. So this is going to grab the default parameters that we set up in Collimator. So that we, there we had a QB set point of four and a half, a level set point of eight, and a QB set point of six. But I want to use my code now to change those set points. So I'm going to give it a QB set point of six, a level set point of 7.5, and a QB set point of 10. So that should, in this uh, model that we've defined up here, this module 4 model, those set points should now have been changed. And we can do that by confirming, grabbing those parameters again. Notice this is the same command, but it yields these different results. Now it's confirming that, yes, it did in fact receive our set points that we had given it before. All right, so I'm going to go here and just run the model. So what, what's physically happening here is we're Python is telling Collimator, run this model. Um, and then it's going to be gathering in those results. Okay, so we, we covered all that last time. So now we're going to be talking about how do we pull in those results. So the main command that I've been using to grab those results uses this pandas, the pandas data frame and data manipulation uh, toolbox in Python. So I'm going to create a new variable here. And I'm just going to say results equals sim dot results dot to pandas and then this needs some parentheses. So basically we've defined this variable called simulation which runs the simulation and then stores all the data and now if we want to pull those results we can do that by drilling down into that simulation variable. Okay so this should be pulling my results now and defining this uh, pandas data frame which is an array of data and we can just look at it by typing results again into the next cell. So you can see it did, it pulls a whole bunch of data. We've got all these different time steps. So you, now you can actually see the kind of uh, simulation time steps that Collimator is taking. So sometimes it's these very, very small time steps, so very high resolution data here. In fact, we're getting uh, 3,800 rows of data and 38 columns. So this just sort of grabs everything that's in there. So we have our the output of our QA variable, these various outputs from our reactor model, um, yeah, we even have like the outputs from our error blocks, from our random uh, number generators, just everything here. And notice these dotted lines means we're not even seeing everything. So there are, again, 3,800 rows and 39 columns. That's a whole lot of data to be able to work with. Um, in throughout the assignment, we're going to figure out how to parse out, how do we just go and grab individual data points because we won't necessarily want to work with every single thing in here. So one way that you can do that, I do, let's say that I just want to go and grab uh, the, the heat input. So I can drill into this a little bit more. I can just say I want it to print the results at this particular location. So I want all the rows and then I'm going to pick a particular column that I want to look at. So we can pull those from here. We can drill, go back into our collimator model and look at the variable names from in there. Um, let's say we changed our set point on Q. We wanted that to be 10. So now 
I am going to pull the actual value of q. So the variable name in Python is q.out0. No, this is not the set point. This is the actual measured value of q. So hopefully we see this uh, approach 10. So you can see, okay, we're just we've, we're again just doing a preview of this. So we see our time by default. It recognizes that time is in that first column, and we do see that our heating set point or our actual heat delivered to our reactor starts out at zero, but it gradually gets up to 10 as that control valve that's d delivering heat uh, starts to have an impact. So we can certainly do. Uh, more of this, um, we can we can actually plot this response. So I'm going to use another command. So results dot plot, and I'm going to tell it which variable I want. So I'm going to say y equals. Let's grab the same variable q dot out zero. All right. So now we've got a plot. So we do pretty quickly reach that set point. Uh, let's take a look. Let's try some. Let's try plotting some different things. Let's see how our temperature looks over this 120 minute simulation. Okay, so there's our temperature. So it does, it takes us a while to get up to a steady state. And we've actually got a bunch of high frequency noise in here. And that's because in our collimator model, uh, we, I have this set up to have some random um, white noise or Gaussian, yeah, Gaussian white noise in terms of the temperatures of our uh, reactants that are coming into the reactor. So while I have the collimator pulled up here, I um, just want to remind you, you don't actually need this to be open because what Python is doing is it's physically communicating with the collimator server and it's using that API. So you don't need to have collimator open because this isn't running on your machine anyway. All right, let's look at some other results. Um, let's see how our, let's look at our level and how, actually, I'll just go here. So our level, I believe in my model, it's just h dot out zero. Okay, so we do see our level gradually approaching a set point, but I had given it a set point of oh, seven and a half. Yeah, okay, so it is gradually reaching that seven and a half set point. Um, so that, that's how you run your collimator model from uh, from Python using this API, and then you can pull data back in, and again, we're working with collimator is using a, especially with the resolution that I'm asking for, the error tolerances are fairly, uh, fairly low. So this is giving us a whole bunch of data. But again, if we continue into the assignment, we'll figure out how to go in and parse out just the variables that we want. Okay, another thing we can actually do here is we can plot multiple things on the same plot. So let's say I wanted to plot my height set point along with my actual measured height. So I'm just going to add in a uh, square bracket here, and I'm going to give this two different inputs that I want to view. So I had just I fed it in this height set point, but now I can actually read back in this height set point from collimator, and now we, we can plot the uh, measured variable and the set point on the same plot. So here we could do the same thing for QB, plotting it up against our QB set point, and there you go. So. So this interface is really nice, really handy. This will allow us to do some things that, you, that are a little more difficult to do just in Collimator by itself. Now we can write more complicated scripts like real-time optimization routines or data collection routines, which will be the subject of upcoming assignments.